Think about it. You can control rage your rage. Rage has been nerfed, though. Rage has been nerfed, but think about it. He's at 115. He can guarantee that he's in 120, and rage turns on without having to worry about his opponent hitting him too hard. It's, it's, it's true meta. But then literally any of his moves, like some of his moves ha do, do hurt him now. Like I think neutral air now hurts him. No, I think it's normal old Pikachu neutral air. Oh, is it? I haven't seen it. I just saw Pikachu's new air. I feel, here we go. Robin versus me, Gunner, AKA HO3K Candela, AKA Helper, AKA Isabel. It's a monster. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually it. hate it. The pop gun's Ooh. pretty cute though. Pop gun that she got from like freaking I don't okay. know, like so Area 51. <laughs> hey, hey kids. <laughs> you ever wanted to charge your projectiles and that was your entire game plan? Yep. I mean the thing is, like, Burnham's got the edge here slightly in terms of projectile gameplay, because he has the ability to reflect, which Jewel does not. So that could become a factor, yeah, but, but now you see Jules pushing the aggressive. And let's not forget what uh, Robin has that Me Gunner doesn't. A kill confirm. <laughs> she has power behind her. And honestly, the way that Proton will probably have to play this is that nickel and dime time him out if you need to. He doesn't. He's not afraid to do it, especially as a character that can struggle to kill. If you just get your opponent to 180 and then like second stock it at 180, and you might not be able to kill him, but six minutes has gone by, and that's all right. That down air, that freaking uh, arc thunder, yes, arc thunder to down air is ridiculous. You can kill Bowser in like seven years. You gotta respect it. Back to the charging war. Oh my god. So at that point, he was just trying to use his book. He was trying to recharge it. Or trying to like use the book against him, but then uh, Proton ended up approaching. Couldn't get the up smash, so I'll Jewel going for the fast fall. I mean, I like the idea of trying to get his book purely because it gives him another projectile option. He is losing his projectile war, considering that, you know, when he. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Me Gunner has more options. And so just by giving that book such a tricky use of that item can uh, possibly give him an opening, give him an edge, because he does need that right now. Oh, Proton already dishing out 100. Oh, he's dead. The thing is, both Me Gunner and Robin have the ability to do that. You know, throw some fire on the edge of the, the where the ledge is for like an edge guard opportunity. So it's just like pulling the tricks against each other. Yeah, and <laughs> oh, that was beautiful timing on that uh, neutral gap. Oh, because he has extra ledge invincibility. Mm -hmm. <gasps> so actually, he doesn't have to worry about our fire. Granted, I think that uh, Jewel can still punish that, but at least he can he can get around it relatively easily. Okay, bro, I'm sitting at 111%. I like how the shot did not connect to the back throw at all. Me Gunner's aim is just atrocious. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's always fun to watch Proton play is that he just, he moves like crazy. Like that back air gives Me Gunner so much momentum. You know, you got Jewel over here just charging his laser. Oh, I love this use of the grab. Me Gunner might not get much off of grabs, but she does scare people into shield. You know, because of the fact she doesn't get anything off of grabs. And so, you know, it does give him the advantage and gives him extra percent, and then percent is important. Maybe not so much this time around, just because of the fact that, you know, 100 and uh, he's up an entire stock. Down throw, trying to get the up air afterwards. Air dodging coming through hot from Jewel. Goes for the Thrawn. Good shield coming out from Brodom. Saw coming knew he had it fully charged, but now... Proton's got him at that pretty high percent. Still sitting on two stocks. I thought you, you're talking about the nickel and dime timeout strategy from Jewel, but Proton's the one in the lead currently. Yeah, no, I think that's actually probably Proton's game plan. Just because he's the one who's going to struggle kill. I, kill he's like, still playing mad aggressive. He is. Like, he is still approaching, which is very peculiar. I mean, not actually that peculiar. Against he, Robin, sometimes you want to do it. The thing is that Proton actually has, like, really good neutral. Like, really good at studying habits. Really good at knowing when his opponents are scared and pressured. And so if he sees an opportunity, he will take it. Uh, even if it means that he has to go on the aggressive. Level. Gets the grab. Tries to go for the up air. That time we saw Jewel able to double jump away from it. Because he was trying to go for the 50-50. Either he air dodges or jumps. Oh. Trying to get that read on the roll. Or the get up. Let's not forget that... I think, what do you think, Proton is 40%, nah, like 30% away from dying from uh, Checkmate? 
Uh, I think you have to be at like 70 already. With this much rage? Yes. Something like that. I oh. would not be surprised. Forward oh. smash. Ooh. Actually killed. Okay. He actually took a percent from being in the blast, like the edge of the blast zone too. So I was like, maybe he'll survive. But that we are X percent did not help Proton actually get this talk though. No, of course not. I'm it's just not saying, not. like it just. Oh yeah, on. no, no. I know. I'm just for those of you at home who maybe oh. don't understand. Not that. Maybe we're getting some new viewers. You know, people getting excited for new viewers and sm for Smash 4's decline. <sighs> Here we go, down in city. All right, yeah. So I like this stage a lot. Um, we got are not really a character that's known for killing off of the top. You know, there is up smash, but it's not really that strong. So, uh, ooh, nice grab. But uh, Robin, on the other hand, she is notorious for those powerful grab to up air. I can't believe the Mies have such a bad role. Or at least me Gunner does. Sometimes it'd be like that. One thing that you no that uh, you notice is that that uh, the forward air from uh, Proton is working out really well just because Robin doesn't have the speed to catch him. Like, uh, just Robin has the slowest run speed in the game, and air speed is not that great either. So when he's going around here, yeah, it can just be difficult to actually punish it, even if he knows where he's going to be. No. No. That is mad. Oh, jeez. I feel so bad for Jeweled Man. He went for the Nosferatu, and I guess he uses double jump, so he just kind of fell to his death. Well, no, he goes into free fall. Oh, free fall. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Damn. And you do not want to be losing just random stocks like that against Proton. He's so good at playing with the lead. He's so good at just nickel and diming you. And when you have one stock to one stock, it doesn't feel that bad because you're like, okay, you have rage and there's not much you can do to kill me. But when you're down an entire stock, every time you get nicked by forward air, you know, hit by side B, it does really matter. Yeah, you got uh, Proton, you know, like you said, he has that lead, so he's going to be dancing on those platforms. That being said, he actually hasn't managed to rack up that much damage so far. Ooh! He gets no killed by the up B. You got that uh, L win sending him flying. I should have some projectiles. Yeah, these guys just taking it patient right now. Okay, I like the idea behind that. He actually gets hit by the Arc Thunder, though. And now he's taking some damage, 35%. He's about, you know. Jewel's starting to bring him back a bit. Yeah. Got that one more use of the uh, L Thunder and the Arc Fire to get the book. Be able to play some with some projectiles. Able to just shine that away. Good conversion from Protom. Same at 99%. Connects the up air. Wait a moment. He is looking pretty good right now. I love it. He's canceling his momentum with that shine. And now, Proton went like one hit away from making it into winner's finals. I oh my. One hit. This is me, Gunner. It's going to take a little more oh, than one hit. Oh, there it Two is. Proton moves In on winners to finals. winner's finals. A me, Gunner at Xeno? Shut up. Question. What is Proton's record against Dill like? Have they, I don't know. I don't think they've ever played. <laughs> Maybe. I, I, they probably have. I don't know it. Hey, guys. Pro oh. Yeah, up tilt. Up tilt I was I up tilt when game. I was a kid. I didn't know it was a move. Because I would always up smash or jump. Freaking noob. I mean, that's what I would say if I was a kid, honestly. All right. So now we have Booty versus Dill. I believe Booty has taken sets from Dill, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Meta Knight. Like, if you fight Meta Knight enough, you're going to lose a set eventually. The character just has so much burst potential, and he punishes singular mistakes just so well that, uh, yeah. We could possibly see an upset today, and then we'll have Meta Knight versus Meek Gunner in winner's yeah. finals. Like I said, the winner of this will go on to fight Protom, which is weird as heck. Very wacky, you know, we got going on here, but you got Dash Attack. 
A very good combo starter for Meta again. Ooh. Okay, that was that was very interesting right there because Booty went for the forward smash because I covered normal get up and rolls to the left. So that's why Dill went for the get up attack because he knew that he was going to try to go for something like that. Very smart Actually, play from Dill. It was also Meta Knight does a little bit of wind back. And if he had spaced himself just a little bit more, it probably could have covered all three of those options. Uh, possibly all four, maybe? Because then that's this weird hitbox on his body. He was in the heat of the moment. I mean, it's at 91%, although, because Dill is just racking up damage bit by bit. See, the thing is that Meta Knight, of course, he wants that dash attack. He loves that dash attack. But when Dill has Banana, he has to just respect it, which means he doesn't have the same ground game that we would normally do, and that up smash is going to take it. Only 29% on Dill. He's looking like he's in a comfortable position. There we go. Dill again, you know, getting that off of a Z-drop banana peel. Able to get some big damage. Monkey flips right into his face. Just to rack up some damage. Man, the damage being punished that up is he hasn't landed a single hit since his new stock. That was the first one, and it was only 2% from one hit of back air. Yeah, Dill is dominating this game currently. He's like, I want to win this, you know. And it looks like he is on that path, or at the very least, he is making it to winner's finals. Because look at that, only 38% the entire game. Booty's got to shake that off. Just like he's got to shake that booty, moving on to this next game. I'm sorry. <coughs> what do you think he's going to pick? I think. I'm sorry. So, town, I would guess Town and City is banned. Yep, it's right there. Oh, Lilac. I don't feel okay. good about that anymore. Now, why do you think Lilac? Maybe the That's tilting can help him avoid banana in some situations? Nah, he just wants the platforms, honestly. Yeah. And it also gives him, like, a, like I said, it, it also gives him the ability to be able to, you know, jump off the platforms, gives him some, like, a little bit of arches so he can miss the peel, like you said. So, yeah. We go monkey flip into the up tilt. Man, it's oh. racking up the damage. Neutral air, very rare move you see it come out from Dill, but he's able to confirm off of it every single time well, he it lands really, it. It was smart because of the fact that he knows that Meta Knight wants to dash attack his landings. And so the way he positioned that neutral air, it actually beat it out before it could come out. And all of this damage is pretty much the result of that. 91%. This is looking similar to game one. Just a brutal showing. Ooh. You're waiting for him to land. All right, that's a hit. And keep in mind, this is Meta Knight. If one of the percents are red, either could be dead. Remember that Dr. Seuss book? He runs up, gets the grab. I believe it was called Oh, the Places You'll Go, colon, the Blast Zone. Nice. Okay, Dill's doing a fantastic... Horton hears a hoo-ha, sorry. <laughs> I, I deeply... <laughs> I'm moving <laughs> off this topic, dog. <laughs> like, we're going... <laughs> Lilac Cruise. Here we go. 142% Dill, one down tilt away from sending Bodia into the Blast Zone. Exploding for everyone. He is moving, but then you know, now you notice that this is another reason why Booty wanted the stage is because it allows him to camp the platforms to get away from the banana peel. Yeah, it's but by it. he might be camping, but it wasn't giving him any damage, no openings, and that means that 31% on Dill. All right, so he's already doing better than game one. I do want to comment that Dill exploded on himself for no reason, right there, just to add on damage for. Wait, does he take damage when he explodes on himself? It depends on how he lands. Like right there, he did. It was only like five, but it was Maybe. very, it was very unnecessary and completely preventable. Maybe he's specifically trying to get out of the range where Meta Knight's combos will come. No, he was dead. What? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when he respawns, maybe I'm just gonna no, pretend I, that's I, what it was. Oh, uh, shh. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. There you go. Genius. You know, he didn't damage air. himself by 5% for no reason. Now my man sitting at 80%, waits for the forward smash before going back in. Honestly, Dill in disadvantage has been doing a fantastic job. Seems to always be picking the right option. Up tilt? Oh, Ooh. he's going high. Or oh, banana. Rather. Goes for the monkey flip again, tries to get that down tilt. Pretty pushing him off him with that forward air. Good punish. Able to DI though. Booty is staying alive. If he takes this stock right now. Oh. Oh. 
If he takes this stock, he still has a chance to at least win this game too. But winning this stock might prove to be difficult. Oh my god, these barrels. Are you kidding me? I That was the very dull thing to do. I have no words. Dill is going to move on to fight off against Purdom in winner's finals. Diddy Kong fighting off against me, Gunner. Me of funner. all things. Meanwhile, yeah. down in the loser's bracket, what do we got going on? Uh, well, that's that's, a, that's an entire different philosophy right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's some good philosophy. I ascribe to that philosophy because he hasn't aged. He's barely got... Well, then again, we don't know his face. He hasn't space. aged a day. It looks beautiful. Well, his first game came out in 1999. It was a Smash 4. Because <laughs> he's a Smash character. All right. So here we go. Robin fighting off against Falcon. Now, this entire matchup is going to consist of Fury trying to just break Joel's defenses, get in there, break his zone, get through his projectiles, just like he's doing right there. And just trying to apply all slopes to crazy pressure against him. You know, Joel, Joel's going to have to try his best to just try to, like, put up this defense. Throw all these projectiles to get him away from him. Because right now he's getting set up a lot. Already talking about 74 damage edge guard opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's not forget what those edge guards can look like. Falcon with his amazing patented down air. And Robin, a character with no hitbox on the recovery. Not very easy to angle. It's very predictable and exploitable. That was so. a beautiful setup coming from Joel. He actually applied a ton of shield pressure going for the Z-drop with that book to force Fury into a panic state. They're so they're little, little tiny things I'm loving from Fury. The way that he beefy up be there to land back on stage. You know, if he had grabbed the ledge, which is the safe play, he would have ended up on ledge. You know, because he was stuck there for about 20 frames, and by then, Jewel could have positioned himself to the point where woo, uh, he could have stranded up for a ledge trap. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of these uh, footstools coming out from Jewel. They're looking pretty accidental because he's not really getting anything from a follow-up because he, go he goes too high into the area. Well, you know? he ended up going for... Oh, is he dead? Nope. Still going to live that. Okay, running out of invincibility. Let's not forget the higher your percentage, the less invincibility you actually get and when you're on the ledge. He's got one more arc fire left in him before he gets that book, and he knows it. Goes for the gentlemen's and send him flying. He's going to be able to live. Good DI. Has the book in hand. Possibly going to use it to wait for him back on stage. Back throw not doing it. And he ends up blowing the Thoron. Thoron at this point is pretty good because of the fact that it can uh, actually take the stock. And it's much yep. faster than Arc Thunder. And he shot that because he wanted to throw a charge on it so he could start like reloading or get the book afterwards. And we're actually seeing Fury kind of struggle to get the kill. As you say that, man. He just uh, throws out that back air. Throws his uh, backhand into the air. Like you just don't care. Yeah. Nice mix up, crossing him up completely with that up bear into a forward smash. Dash tag setting him up again. Lots of solid damage coming out right now. Oh, that good up B to get out of it. Fury's still an advantage. Not only is Jewel on the ledge, but he's already taken 90%. I think he's out of the range for something like up air knee, but Fury hasn't seemed to be going for something like that. He's less, you know, about those gimmicks and more about, you know, let me just hit you so many times that you just die normally. He was also playing incredibly safe, like not chasing after him. Actually kicked him up into the air with the Falcon kick. Are you Goes for the Falcon dive to send him so flying. Risky. If he air dodged that, would he have died? No. He, he, he would have been fine because he got the Falcon, he just would have thrown himself into a fastfall state. I don't know. So he gets this up air. If he would have air he dodged right there, deep. he, he would have been, been fine. How? If Robin would have air dodged? Yeah. He would be completely fine. What? I'm talking about Falcon. Oh, Falcon! What, what, what do you mean? He would. If he air dodged, he would have been off stage. Would he have been able to drift back to the stage if he had... I'm saying that if he had guessed wrong on the 50-50, wouldn't he have died? Uh, maybe? Question yes. mark? I, I, I don't know. Probably. <laughs> well, that shows that Fury is willing to risk it for the biscuit. Doing... <laughs> just kind of doing some stylish things, being real cool about it. Uh... Fortunately, this game, too, is actually... You'd think that with something like that, you'd have a lot of momentum. But he's only taken 96%. Maybe Jewel is actually the one who got a little bit of a strength from that. A sobering moment. They're trying to apply some shield pressure with that neutral air. 
Ooh. By the way, shout out to Ultimate, where I believe you were unable to tech grounded spikes. Correct. Nice drift. Fury just playing incredibly patient there, waiting for Jewel to just go down towards the uh, south. Yeah, once again, he went super deep for that. Worked out for him, but... Uh, all, like, if he keeps going for this, if he keeps being that hungry, Jewel can possibly turn it around. We haven't really seen it yet, but the stocks are even, and <laughs> I don't know. I would expect Fury to do more silly things off stage, honestly. So, if it works, he's cool. If it doesn't, I mean, he's still cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah, that dash stack into some up air setups. Well, he read the roll, but was a little bit hesitant on actually punishing it. Oh, oh that was a good DI. Back that was really good DI from Jewel. DIing in to avoid the, near, the knee setup. Nah, Fury wanted to get weak knee to back. <laughs> he wanted it. It's so much better than just knee. He's going for the simple back air, punishing him for throwing the projectile out. <laughs> yeah, he's still going off stage, even though that's pretty much the what's the opposite of a win condition? A lose condition for him. Is if he gets edge guarded. Trying to get that down here, just goes for the simple gentleman catching and the let go jump. jump. Beautiful recovery though, drifting exactly where he needs to be. Yes, he's taken 141%, but that's a lot of rage. One solid combo is might possibly put him at death percent. That's not even, you know, considering a possible edge guard. Meanwhile, all Fury needs right now at this point is a back air. A gentleman's could kill him at this point. The grab could set up into something beautiful. He's looking for any of them. One thing that he hasn't really gone for is Raptor boost. That is true. I mean, Raptor Boost right now might be super risky. Like, that might be the sort of thing where if it doesn't work, you could just die. That's oh. death. <laughs> what? Caught him double jumping. Wait, where was he? He was below he was like, him, then double jumped that? right in front of him. Is not the grab. Happened? I thought that was some DK, like, absorption. Oh, he, yeah. He, he definitely did. double jumped. But he still, he was like, he was like almost, yeah, he was kind of, he kind of looked, like, looked like he was a little behind him. But I get it. He was like right on top of him. Yeah. Just, still, the, the grab connected. He got the up throw. And Fury's going to move on to loser semis to fight off against the winner of our next round. Boot here on uh, the Vills of Smash. 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 It. Yeah. I, I, there was no way we were going to have game one on Town City. Not with a Meta Knight on one side. And a Cloud on the other. But here we go. One, go. Now, Ralphie's been talking about how he's not, he's not playing Cloud in uh, Ultimate. He says, and I quote, I hate this character. Like in Smash 4, he hates him. Yeah, he doesn't like he doesn't like playing as Cloud. I think he just kind of like he played him because he ended up being good with him and he liked him in the beginning. But he doesn't have like any emotional attachment to the character. He's just like he's good with him, so he plays him. I mean, that is like a really, really strong philosophy to have. You know, if you if like so many people are like, I want to play a character from my favorite game, but what if the character from your favorite game sucks? I mean, sometimes people play that character. I play Shoal. Here we go, 71%. Get that back throw. He's charging his limit immediately. Nice wow. challenge from Booty, my word. Okay, nice job there. So that dimensional cape, he's doing that specific height where it auto cancels. It's really a baiting tool, but Ralphie kind of expecting him to shield. Still got a grab off of it. Oh, just short hops over him. We'll connect that back here. Could be Booty's time to shine. Get back on the stage. Oh, he's out of jumps. Doesn't want to try to capitalize on it. Just in case there's a downer coming his way. He's got to respect the Buster Sword or the Fusion Sword, whatever the heck that weapon's called. Wow, I'm just burning limit right there, and it's actually going to cost him big. I wonder if he had limit, whether he would have survived that. It's possible. Five with limit is much heavier than you'd expect. Nice back air coming from Ralphie. Just like completely just spawning and throwing it out. Evening up the stocks, yeah, this is going to be a big punish. Or, or so, not. Okay, so I was actually uh, playing against Booty and Friendlies, and he was doing this thing where he was just SDA as Meta Knight. Like, he would just go too deep, not have jumps, and just die. Uh, he was saying how he almost did that during his bracket match. Uh, 
It'd be really worrisome if that sort of thing happened to him here when it's, you know, he's possibly on the cusp of fifth place. And, you know, if he has to fight Fury, maybe he can actually make it into uh, semis or finals. That was a cross slash. Uh, I think he wasn't confident on the drift that Meta Knight has. Ooh, drags safe. him off. He's going to force him to burn a limit to get back on the stage. I think this he's had a double jump or it doesn't even matter. Gets caught by the up airs into the up B string. Yeah, and Ralphie, you can see on his face he's not that happy with it. It's the subtle things. It's the uh, <laughs> the pursing of the lips that uh, shows Nah, man, he upset. just looks pissed. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, Ralphie's just Ralphie. I mean, it's, it's fair. All right, let's go into game number two, uh, going straight back to Ooh. Smashville. Yeah, so whenever you, I see someone just go straight back, you know, run it back, you know, possibly there's some emotional charge to it, and they're not going to actually be thinking about what they did wrong. But uh, maybe Ralphie's fixed what was uh, going on there, because 53% start looking pretty good for him as he's tacking up even more damage here, 70. Got the up airs coming out. He tried to go for that neutral air extension, but didn't end up connecting. 45% is nice and all, but he needs to be making these really big plays if he wants to be just being able to take Ralphie out here, because you do not want to let him go to a game three. He's still moving again, applying pressure with the back air, pushes him off stage again. Good stuff. Ralphie just, you know, back air, one of Cloud's safest moves to throw out, as well as more, you know more that powerful. <laughs> against a lot of the cast, back air is safe on power shield. He just taunt. And now he's eating all this damage because he taunted. And now he has to burn limit because he taunted. I mean, think about the psychological damage now. Against himself? <laughs> We might see Taunts get bodied. Okay, good bait. Getting that dimensional cape out of there, just waiting for him to go be high committal on something. Ralphie playing extremely safe now. Off stage, gonna get back to the stage safe and sound due to the Smashville platform coming out for the assist. Booty didn't feel confident, confident trying to push the envelope there. Yeah, Booty's kind of doing this half pressure, and that's gonna be game two. He's kind of doing this half pressure where he goes into these sort of bad positions, yeah. but doesn't actually space at the range where he can punish Ralphie. He's like getting sort of in his face, but not quite all the way there. And so Ralphie might even throw out a laggy move, but he hesitates and doesn't actually get a big punish. Could be like a lack of confidence coming in, but regardless, we're gonna jump into town and city. Ralphie banning Final Destination just doesn't want doesn't want to deal with FD, which I can totally understand. Yeah, Meta Knight FD can be frustrating, but then again, like, if you're Cloud, being able to juggle characters when they have no escape option can be huge. Oh, good power shield in the up air. He's going to get a dash attack to all of this damage, but an up air to combo break, and now your combo is my combo. Picking that down throw into dash attack. We got the dash attack coming out from Booty. Well, he wasn't able to get the platform reset, meaning that the damage there, not as much as he possibly could have gotten, but he's still doing all right. 67, sorry, 65% on Ralphie. Booty is looking pretty hell. Oh no, we, the <laughs> DI. Sheesh. And now spacing with the up airs. Showing those platforms. Yeah, he's, so Booty is definitely a limit cross slash percent. He has to be worried about that. Oh, Ralphie getting a reverse neutral air, trying to combo it into something more. I wonder if he's thinking about possibly putting that limit. Then again, having limit in this matchup is so important just because of the uh, threat of being edge guarded. Then again, what's scarier? Uh, a Meta Knight edge guarding you when you have no limit? Or a Meta Knight with 142% rage. I think they're pretty cool. No, actually, the rage. Ooh, oh. catches the roll. Blade Beam limit break coming out strong. Really good at just catching people going for defensive options. Then again, it is pretty. Oh, is he dead? No, beautiful job getting just the right uh, height for that recovery. Definitely chill down there. Dash attack gets him with the balloon delay. I'm surprised it's still connected with the balloon. 
the extra hit stun can really mess with Meta Knight's combo. Oh, sorry, hit lag can really mess with uh, Meta Knight's combo sometimes. Goes for the throw. Cloud playing super safe. No Ralphie jumping back and forth, waiting for Booty to commit to something. Cross slash, a little too early. I mean, definitely would have taken the game right there. Don't have to worry about losing it or going to a uh, last stock situation. <gasps> oh, again with that dimensional cape. Booty it's goes for that a lot. It's very safe, especially against a character like Cloud, where if you shield, you only get grabbed. Okay, catches the roll. I feel like Booty's the kills. Most most kills against Ralphie, this has just been like run up up smash. Catching uh, Ralphie going for a big punish. Now, this could be scary for Ralphie. Like I said, he's got a lot of rage. He's got the dash attack to connect. Ralphie's laying right down on the ground. Just goes for a simple short hop back air. That's going to be the set. Ralphie moving on to loser's semis to fight off against Fury. Then you got uh, Booty going down with the fifth place finish. Definitely solid there. And, uh, I think before we go into loser semis, though, we have a nice treat for you. Pro Tom and Winners Finals. That's a, that is a knee gunner. Cinnaroar is going to be godlike. I'll show you. Anyways, here we go. Smashville. Mewtwo coming out from Dill. Coming out with the counter picks. It feels insanely comfortable rocking that Mewtwo against uh, oh, no. Mew Gunner like you were saying previously. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Actually, I love the way that Proton is playing around these reflectors, throwing out these little beams, knowing that uh, <laughs> knowing that Mewtwo is going to look for that reflect, but and then somehow finding the window in between to land one of those bigger charges. Did that cancel out? Does Side B beat Shadow Ball? I mean, I feel like Proto's just been chilling on that platform for like the majority uh, of this game. He got the percent lead, and this is absolutely his game plan. He is absolutely going to just like never take another percent so that he can just time Dill out. Or maybe Dill will start going for unsafe approaches. Yeah, this I, he hasn't, the reflector hasn't really been working out, despite the fact that I would say that was maybe, that's maybe the best thing from you two in this matchup. I do want to comment that, like, he's not, obviously not going for the timeout this early in the game. He's just playing safe because he has to. I mean, honestly, it could be in his mind where basically he's like, I am not going to approach because I don't need to. So I'm just not going to approach. Oh, that like that ledge cancel air dodge coming out from Dill. Even more damage. He is mixing up Dill a bit. Trying to slide in, gets grabbed instead. Mewtwo sending him off. It's Shadow Ball uh. trying to. I mean, the thing is, like you said, me gunners or me's in general just have the weird wonky timing when they get back onto the stage. But oh. Dill drifting down below the platform just comes the rising forward air. It's yeah. Like seal Protom's fate. This uh, this stage is definitely Mewtwo favored, I'd say. Then again, I don't think there's a stage that would be me gunner favored, but. It's just right there, able to take an insanely early stock with that forward end. Oh, it could be an opportunity. Tries to get the up B spike. But uh, I believe it's considered a projectile, which is why it just did not work there. The problem trying to cover is a uh, way to get back to the ledge with up air. Still trying to mix him up, goes for the down tilt, a great combo starter from Mewtwo. Allows him to go what? for the spike that he was looking for the whole time. Dill taking away game number one in dominant fashion. And for a long time there, Protop had the percent lead and he was playing it beautifully. But, you know, he was hanging out on that Smashville platform a bunch and Dill got that one opening and took a stock at like 70%. <coughs> so now we're going to have uh, Proton with the counter pick coming out. This is the first time we've seen Protom on stream lose game one. So we're going to have to see him trying to play from that uh, deficit. Town and city, uh, pretty pretty okay choice. I mean, you are playing against Mewtwo, who has the ability. The counter pick? Proton plays someone other than me, Gunner? In tournament? I actually had no idea. Wait, no, I, he, I, I've seen him play Game Watch and Friendlies, but never, I don't think I've ever seen him pull out a tournament. So the thing is that Dill's Mewtwo is very well practiced at dealing with 
the characters who he does very well against. Most notably, you know, we the trainer. Uh, you know, he was doing a really solid jo job against uh, that new gunner. But I, he doesn't really have super balanced matchup experience. The, like, you know, to the point where if he's not using those four, like, the, the main moves from... Like, if they're not going to just have an answer what Game Watch does, he might actually struggle. And down tilt's going to be like a godsend in this matchup for Dill. Because Mr. Uh, Mr. Game Watch being a slightly shorter character, I was going to try to space him out a little bit while always making sure to like hit him, especially if he tries to go for like a duck animation where Game Watch pretty much shrinks to nothing. Yeah, not only that, I believe it beats out up smash. Now, he also was going for the bucket there earlier, trying to get some charges well, in there. I think that's one of the big reasons for him picking this character, is the fact that you can just not shadow ball freely when he's dead, though. Wow. Down throw into forward air. Let's not forget how small Game & Watch is. He's one of the lightest characters in the game, just outside of that featherweight range. So, me too with his insane kill power. Here we go, Dill you know, running in, trying to get some trades going with that dash attack. Down tilt again. I like this clever little use of view reversing. Mixing up Proton. Uh, sorry, mixing up Dill rather. Is he dead? No, but this is a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> Proton. So, so Game Watch might be just out of the range of Featherweight, but Mewtwo is a Featherweight. So that apparently works. I haven't seen that work in so long. That's hilarious. He's dead. Oh. Good night. <laughs> okay, Dill. <laughs> you kidding me? Osti is out of the room. <laughs> he had the disable. He had two disables here. He got the disable. Jump smash it doesn't land in his game and watch. <laughs> it's just a, he's a small boy. Look at this. Doesn't connect. <laughs> That kill? What percent was he? Oh my god. Look at him. Look at him flexing. Flexing his back. <laughs> is Osti coming back? Yeah, he is. Alright, I don't have to solo commentate a game three here. I had to talk to Dill. What did you tell him? I just put my hand on his shoulder. It's not talking. Yes, it is. It's, <laughs> it's communication. Yeah, communication ain't talking. Oh my god. I cannot believe Dill just flubbed that so hard. <laughs> well, now I we got now we got the counter pick advantage in Dill's favor. Uh, but what sort of, where do you think he's going to go, because... If he stick, if he stays with the game and watch, I could definitely see Dill switching to Diddy. Oh, that is true. Yeah, and, I mean, Game & Watch is very poor against Diddy. I feel like that's a really rough matchup. And that's why Protom's taking a while to decide, because it's like, this is a big moment for him. He's got to pick a character. And no matter what no matter what he picks, he's going to play a matchup that he probably doesn't want to do. If he goes back to me, Gunner, Dill's going to stay Mewtwo. So he stays on Mr. Game & Watch. we got Diddy Kong coming out. So you got to make that call, man. Believe in your heart. Personally, I believe in the nine. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see him stick I, with Game & Watch. Here's the thing. So Game & Watch was used to counter this Mewtwo. And even then, he won off of the gimmick. Yeah. He, he, he won a game Double he should gimmick. not have won. He should not have won that game. Yeah, so... He should, go back to, he should go back to Me Gunner. So, I mean, he and he was doing really well for that first game uh, as Me Gunner. Yeah. And playing Me Gunner, he's not actually. Is this actually happening? He's sticking with Game & Watch. Alright, then we're, I would be surprised if we don't see a counter pick to... Yeah, did he come? Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When, when you play multiple characters like that, and you lose Game 1, you that's a huge disadvantage in terms of, like, counter picking. So here we go. Town and City. Diddy Kong coming out from Dill. Fighting off against the Game & Watch. And, you know, to be frank, I feel like Dill could have just stayed Mewtwo. Like, he had I mean, that game. He just, like I said, he just threw it away. Also, to be frank, I feel like he could have gone Diddy Kong either way. Yeah. Like, it's not that, like, oh, my God, me going to do so well against Diddy Kong that I just need No, to it get gives him a better him. better chance. All right, but, yeah, this is one of the problems with Game Watch. He's kind of slow. It can be hard for him to get past all the stuff that Diddy Kong wants to do. And, yeah, it can normally be hard to combo a character like Game Watch, but... Still, Jill has so many consistent combos with this character that, uh, look at that 56% already off of only a few neutral wins. He's got the peel in hand, gets the confirm off of it. If that would have been a 9, I swear to God. I mean, 
It would have been a beautiful day. Okay, Protom's chilling on that ledge. <laughs> now, at this point, he's got... He, I mean, Protom's trying to approach as wisely as possible. He doesn't want to get too antsy, especially when Dill's got that peel in hand. Dill is... Dill's Diddy is such a force to be reckoned with when he has the peel because he gets so much damage off of it, just like that. Apply some shield pressure, allows him to spawn the second banana peel in the process. Again, goes for the down throw that time. Yeah, really good job using this double jump there to uh, sort of mix up the landing. Dash attack can be a really good move from Game & Watch, but it is a bit of a commitment. Uh, and so if Dill is able to just, you know, know what's coming <laughs> around it. Uh, just goes for the chair. That, that very risky dash attack to pick up the banana peel. I think maybe he wanted to go for like a jab or something just to pick it up really quick. Because that dash attack is super laggy. Okay, just going for the simple rapid jab. Get some oil in my boy. Ends the rapid jab just in time to avoid that down air. But now, I feel like at this point, Dill is going to play aggressive. And just get in there. And try to back up damage as much as possible. And just try to close out the stock while he has the momentum, while he has the advantage. And set, try to send Protom to losers. Lucky flip. This could be the end. Potential edge guard. Oh, bet it all on that forward smash. It's just getting worse and worse for Proton. You know, that nine, of course, could be a factor, but he would need two of them, pretty much. I don't know if he's necessarily so good at getting the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, it looks like he's aiming for this up smash more. <laughs> Is very, it, wait, very dull thing to do. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, me, of course, Proton has super solid neutral, but... He just doesn't know the combos in the way that like a pure dedicated Game & Watch main would. And so, at the end, it's like the 7 millionth time we've seen Barrels take a, uh, take a game. There you have it, folks. It's going to be uh, Dill moving on to Grands. Agreed. Now, you can say like he it wasn't it wasn't as good as he was, but call me the man. Nothing. Shame on you, Salty. Well, now he is quite something, <laughs> making it all the way to loser semis here. Top four guaranteed. Oh! 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 oh my god. I'm mad as hell. No one died. <laughs> we saw some crazy things from that up B last time around. Can we also talk about the hitbox on that up, up B? Like, it's surprisingly devastating. All right. Ralphie doing a good job of just applying shield pressure against Fury with that up air. This is, is going to be Fury's game plan, right? Is whenever he gets a hit on Ralphie, he's going to try to push it to the limit whenever he gets him off stage. No pun intended. Yeah, I mean, these oh, platform helping out Ralphie to ends up not getting comboed off that down throw. But I'm loving the recoveries from Fury, the way that he's able to just angle and drift his up B. Even a uh, character like Clap, all these crazy hitboxes, is not able to effectively punish him. Okay, good scout by that neutral. Both players at high percents. Fury trying to find his way back to the stage, using the Smash Hole platform to give him some edge. Oh, oh. Very risky back of side B, but didn't actually get punished for it. Yeah, we were talking before. He has no jump. This could be death yeah, for that's, Ralphie. Oh, he's yep. still dead, though. Having to, Forcing that air dodge at just the right time so that uh, Ralphie couldn't make it back, even though he managed to get past that back air. Okay, yeah, Ralphie, that was a good double jump from Ralphie. Able to get back to the stage as safe as possible because that could have ended deadly. Catches the up air instead, takes away Fury's first stock. Cloud back air is safe on power shield. It's. Cloud's really good against shields. That's a shtick. Ooh, combos. But like, it's safe on power shield. Yeah. It's literally some characters just don't have an answer. Okay, up air. It's from the left. Oh, he's out of jumps. Fury managed. Uh, th that was good recovery from Fury. Opting to take the high route because he recognized that Ralphie was on the ledge. Gave some time to give him, some, give him some time to breathe. I think that probably those knees are supposed to be raw back airs. Is he dead? Yeah, he's super dead right there. Ralphie gonna be losing game one. Fury just needs to take one more game, and he's gonna be in loser semis. We're gonna have Proton versus Fury and losers finals actually at the second to last scene. Bro, it's game one. Game one. Let's see what happens. Game number two. 
He's got switching. the counter picks coming. Oh, is he going to switch to Ben? Oh. No, he's just resetting his controller. Maybe there's actually a controller issue. That could very well be a possibility. Rafi's been doing a lot of running back today. He feels confident on the stage. I mean, it's a good stage. It's like an, it's an average stage, honestly, for this matchup. Whoop! That was great spacey gun from Fury. Recognizing that down tilt is going to come right at his feet. Slip right on his welcome rug. Oh, the landing lag from that up air. Oh, sorry, the up B rather is still extending. Uh, I believe he can cancel it with his up air. Because Falcon up air. <laughs> you know, I have myself here like being like, how is Cloud back air safe on power shield? Let's not forget Falcon up air. That move's ridiculous for shield pressure. Falcon is so good against shields. Not because he can not only because he can press them, but also his grab game is just so good. Cloud hurt box for me, ladies and gentlemen. That, All right. that was definitely a miss input. There's no way. No, that was def <laughs> He tried to go play like a Raptor boost or something, catch, and then just he did neutral B because he just ate dirt for that. Nah, it was a mind game. Also, side B reached. Ooh, that was just amazing spacing. Both of these guys, their recoveries have been so good. But now we actually have Fury 17%, uh, but is this Falcon? He can even that sort of thing up so quickly. No jump, though. Still no jump, but he manages to break out of it. Robbie was looking for an air dodge right there. He wanted to get that forward air spike. It could have been a jab block opportunity. Fury just uh, I don't think Falcon jab blocks in this game. Try to get that forward smash. Oh, my god. I don't think he has to jump. I don't think he touched the ground. Yeah, that's going to be game two. Uh, maybe I was getting ahead of myself because Ralphie, that was, now he's only one game away. Both these guys are only one game away from losers finals. And I believe, is that money? Fourth is money? Oh, so they're already in the money. We're in the money. The sky is sunny. Honey. Oh, wow. That is not the lyric. What? Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, di di different verses. Say. Different verses. That's what it is. <gasps> oh, good uh, recovery there from Alfie, though. But he's taken all of this damage and nary a response. Only there is zero percent on Fury. Finally, a single hit. But let's be fair. Uh, oh, Cloud can just rack up so much damage so quickly. I don't know if he has a jump. Oh, he does. Dashing her dot to that back air. Uh, remember when Fury hadn't gotten hit yet? Remember that? That was a zero to death. That was uh, Ralphie popping off on that stock. My word. Oh, this could Fury's be really turn. Big, though. He's this not going to give him the air dodge. He's opts to go for the double jump instead. Just get back to stage safe and sound with his limit intact. Wow, that down air managing to actually still outspace the back air from Falcon. And the poorly spaced back air is going to get that punished. Yeah, if you power shield the poorly spaced back air, it is punished. What a mix up. Just lands right in front of him and goes for a grab. Okay, Fury's going to wait for that platform. Ooh, gets caught by the upper instead. Go back to that platform, sir. He just wants to touch home base. Yeah, you know, people talk about how Cloud's grab game is not that good, but almost that all that damage was because that grab put him on the platform. Okay, get the cross up back here coming from Fury. Ralph going on to his final stock of the game. Yeah, you know, we haven't really seen Fury go for those a little bit more gimmicky options, the up air to knee. I think he's kind of respecting it out of Ralphie, but if he gets desperate enough, he might he just go for that sort of stuff, just to let it rip. Ooh, blind. That shield getting smaller and smaller. Fury had to start moving right there. 103% back here on the spot dodge. Yeah, at this point, there's no reason for Alfie not to go for back airs. Oh, the up air just to combo break once again. Falcon's hitboxes really fall victim to that. Okay, at this point, Ralphie's once again, probably going to want to hold on to limit until he sees a great opening to go for it because he wants to be able to recover or just waste it. You know, whatever works. Dash attack, not still enough. Still not enough. And if Falcon is alive, he can still make this comeback. One up air niche. 
could finish him from pretty much anywhere on stage. I think he knows that, but the up air of his own. Ralphie is going to be taking it, moving on into loser's finals where he gets the run back against Prada. Yep, my man Ralphie just kind of cleaning up house there, games two and three. Taking away that set from Fury, moves on, like you said. Guaranteed top three. See if he can get his revenge against Fury. And you know, I, I almost like, as much as I want Prodom to win the tournament, I almost want Ralphie to win so that he can move on and beat Dill. Probably. Because there was this massive I don't believe era. that. There was I this massive era where they would fight like every week. Mo sometimes multiple times. Oh, he's going for Ops. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. He wants to go for the uh, push buttons character. As he yeah, likes to call. I mean, the thing is, like, me Gunner does have the ability to walk characters out, but Fox is probably the best zone breaker in this game. He just closes distances so well, and he has this amazing frame data once he actually does get in. And especially if the cloud is not working, I can see it as a fine response to try out this one. At least try him out. And I like that patience coming from Ralphie. Probably gave him a little trigger happy on that platform, expecting uh, Ralphie to jump up after him. So I'm over that down smash and the punish afterwards. But now Proto's tagging on a lot of damage against Ralph. This is actually a lot of damage. 80% of pretty much just that one neutral win. That's one of the problems with Fox. He is very comboable. He doesn't have the best disadvantage. We haven't really seen any ed uh, let, like edge guards, but that's also a possibility that Proton might go for. <laughs> Wow, up to hitting that the was high. OD. <laughs> My man followed him to the ground and went for the up smash. Like, I thought he was going to go for the back air, but just mixed him up completely. Now, seeing at 108%. Got that FMY mix coming out. Oh, oh wait. Uppy. Yeah. Oh, this went down there. I feel like Uppy is really good against Fox, uh, Uppy, though. Got them up tilts. A, A. Now we have up airs. Oh, trying to chase them. Yeah, Proton be expended his double jump to get away from that combo. Here we go, Proton taking away his stock. So Me Gunner does have down smash. He has two good moves. Down smash, sometimes, and forward air. And Fox is actually one of the easiest characters to kill off the side because of his fastball speed and extremely light weight. So, if the gunner has some rage, he could possibly take a very early stock. Good spacing from Ralphie. Pulling back on that neutral so he can't get grabbed from Proton. Oh. Uh, again, he tried to do it, but Mean Gunner's got them iframes, bro. Well, no, it was already a commitment. Uh, like, me, it's like Proton just knows the amount of time he has during his, like, get up attack, get up for, uh, to have total invincibility. Like, as soon as Fox goes for that forward smash, yeah, there it is again. It's, he's doing it preemptively, and just Proton is catching that and punishing him for it. He had no invincibility, but Ralphie has Backer. He runs up, gets the grab, tosses him off 138%. Looking for a kill. Oh, Ooh, a little bit too light. Wow. Proton actually getting the. Uh, <gasps> this could be big. How did Fox get through that? Oh. This is actually super scary. Yeah, just the Ra shine on his face. Ralphie's also trying to get that shine just in case you got a projectile coming out from me, Gunner. Oh, uh, yeah, he does have the fully charged charge shot. I don't think it will kill at this point because that move is kind of pitifully weak, actually. <gasps> the stack not comboing. That neutral air lasting so long off stage. Can't get the back air. Oh, grab's not going to do it, though. Grab almost never does it, and now we have 175%. This is one of the problems oh, with... Oh, what the heck? Okay, he actually lived. I feel Ralphie would definitely... <gasps> even if Ralphie didn't hit him, the way he was falling, he could have made it back from that. But then there was an edge guard opportunity for a Proton. But he managed to take that trade, take away game number one, and go into number two. It looks like yeah. the Fox counter pick is working out. However, he was dropping the ball a little bit at the end of that game. Yeah. Yeah, he super committed with that down smash. We're gonna have FD. Uh, no platforms to dance around. Three, two, one, go! 
Okay, immediately just closing the distance completely, just getting rid of any sort of stage control that Proton could possibly have. You know, Proton, uh, Nikano usually doesn't have that many combos, but I feel like against Fox, maybe she does, just because of the way he's so combo. What a chase from Proton. Just tossing him off stage before going for that up air. Wow. 83% already. And Pro this is not the sort of game that would go to timeout. They are in each other's faces. Proton just trying to... He's just being brutal right now. Despite how we were talking about how Fox is amazing at getting in. He's just not really finding openings. Proton's just not getting into him. Waits for him to get up. There, he actually played patient that time around because finally adapting to the Me Gunner's weird uh, get up timing on the iframes. Ooh! Waits for him to just jump right in front of him, gets the grab, tries to send him up into the air. Yeah, Fox's damage output down tilt? All right, that yeah, that strong. takes the stock. I know it's. There's strong, actually but... literally an explosion when he does that. Yeah, she there are other that. moves that are explosions. Okay, uh, Samus down tilt is not that strong. Me gunner forward smash is not that strong. And that's a machine gun blast. Oh, he's dead. Oof. Accidentally misspacing that recovery that could spell the entire set for them. Let's see if he, if he can try to bring this back or if Ralphie's gonna steal that momentum away from him. Go side B's in. Can't really set that into a combo at that little percent. But I'm getting that guaranteed combo off of the throw. Up throw, up air. Goes right through the air dodge. Wow, all this damage, but finally a down air, but he doesn't actually get anything off him. He gets put back in this bad situation once again. Oh, this could be huge. That's no, no tech. tech coming from Ralphie, falling into the blast zone. Proton still has some life left in him, dude. He is still breathing out here. Yeah, Proton looking super solid. Granted, that is sort of his best stage. FD is super, it's just really good for him. Okay, Lilac banned, actually. Oh, because he was, he knows that the cloud is a problem, that you can go with the cloud if he needs to. Cloud on battlefield. Three, two, Definitely gonna allow him to get a lot of down air cancels. You know, at this point, Ralphie's gonna get a lot more off of limit. The Pearl would offer that full, fully charged shot. There you go, waits for the air dodge. Drift's a little bit weird. Yeah, and this being, you know, Ralphie, is, he, this is his main character. The one he's most comfortable with, his punish game is a lot more consistent than with his uh, Fox. Granted, his Fox had a pretty good punish game, but, like, have you seen his Cloud? Have you seen him zero to death, Falcons? Yes. I would hope so. Try to go for that Trump. Put him ahead of the game. Blind shield pressure from down below the platform. Oh. That, what an escape. That Just goes for the so ledge. Brilliant that would have shield broken if he did not do that. Just a beautiful job from Protop. Oh, and he's racking up a lot of damage. Granted, this is me, Gunner, and getting the kill is really where the characters struggle so much. Cloud does not have that issue. Trying to apply that pressure. Frost yeah. slash sends him flying. Yeah, once again, that air dodge from off stage is gonna get uh, last time it was a lighter punish, and that time, yeah, full limit cross slash is gonna be brutal. And even though this is the first time we've seen this matchup, this is game three, then this is Protom's tournament stock? Possibly. Yeah, but this is one of the reasons that, uh, <laughs> what a Ralphie trap. does not like this matchup. The ledge traps are actually so good. That's gonna be it. Outlasting the air dodge. I got one stock P, zero percent. Okay, Ralphie trying to put himself into a position. Ooh, that shine. If he would have got hit by that shine, it would have pushed him off stage. Put him into a very poor situation. Again, Proton just playing safe, waiting for Ralphie to commit. He's just getting jabs. They might not be that much damage, but if you're consistently getting them, it puts him in an advantageous position where Ralphie... I mean, right now, he's just charging this limit, but... But funny enough, once he gets that limit, he has to approach. Granted, he has the boosted stats, anything to help with that. Down air. 
Combo starter. Oh, Chasing him. <laughs> Mixing him up by going for that empty hop into a grab. Now at this point, Ralphie just wants to get these combos started. Get, get Protom airborne as much as possible. Because Protom has a little bit of a problem trying to land against Cloud. I like that ledge attack. Just an option we hadn't seen yet. <gasps> High recovery is actually going to get only slightly punished, but punished nonetheless. Made it back to stage and can easily charge up another limit. Already, already fourth of the way there. Already half of the way there. Just goes, ends up filling up so quickly. Oh, Trying to come down with that guaranteed up air. This is looking very scary for Ralphie. <gasps> Ooh, Let's that, it rip a little bit too antsy. But granted, like the thing about being antsy is that he can charge up. You've seen how he consistently is able to get limit. And especially when he is at a percent lead like this, that puts pressure on Proton to actually be proactive, which can be so difficult against Cloud, especially if you're a character like me gunner and that's going to be game three ralphie is going to win there and he's now getting his shot at dill yeah ralphie climbing back gets his revenge against protom using the fox and then eventually back to cloud on battlefield and uh you know what that, that was a good run from protom making it the third place for the first time and his release weekend play all weekend Go -go -go. ultimate and then fall after that is followed by the first ultimate weekly the wednesday after let's get it grand finals ralphie fighting off against dill Ralphie's sitting on the winner's side of Grands. I mean, still needs four games to take home this tournament. Can he get this uh, last win against Dill? Or is Dill going to clean up house? You decide. They decide, honestly. So Cloud versus Diddy. You know, uh, right off the bat, you know, Cloud's going to be able to apply a lot of this pressure against him. Trying to prevent him from laying down on the ground. Out of double jumps. This is a really bad spot. Because he got ooh, caught by the monkey ooh, flip ooh. so early, he was not able to get back and onto the stage. Ralphie. Was that on purpose? Honestly, it could have been. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, these two have played so much. They know each other's little the intricacies of the play style. Well, Dill is Ralphie's father. I know. He's his father and his training partner. It's a sweet father-son relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey, Ralphie's just trying to beat out this banana peel. Chill on this platform. But yep. Dill has he has to take a single hit. And right as you say that probably will end up actually happening. Yep, there it is. Eight percent. Down air a really good option for him to try to land down on the ground as safe as sound. Ralphie has to or Dill has to respect it. Good pick up with that banana peel, trying to defuse that scenario of being a potential trap. Oh, good smash the eye, but he's not actually able to get to him in time for a punish. Back throw is going to send him flying. This could be an edge guard. Didn't want to challenge it. Respect it. Trying to mix up his recovery with the wall jump, but Dilsey's right through it. Goes for the forward air again, saving his double jump to get back onto the stage. Ralphie is still... Dead. He's dead. He's gone. He's actually done for. Second stock. And now Dill is only at 17%. Let's see. He's already, like, this is pretty much evened up. And that was a really early, uh, like, really early death from last time. A little bit quirky. So, uh, Ralphie on the whole, his, like, gameplay has not been, actually, like, his gameplay in terms of consistency does not, it's not actually reflected in the score. The grab off stage tries to challenge it. Oh, Good, he got that perfect pivot, but he had, he had the correct punish. read. Just a little slow to the trigger, man. A lot of spaghetti coming out. Man, this banana is just not. I've heard that apparently Diddy Kong banana just really is kind of. He's biased towards Diddy. Like the banana, he's just, the way he just like vacuum catches it is unlike other characters. So even though Rocky is holding it, it's hard for him to actually get that much mileage. Dill is just catching it back again. 
Limit Cross Dash, though, is such a threat here. Not many other things, but still. A dash attack will like a misinput. Okay, just gonna monkey flip through that entire situation. Let's it rip. Still sitting pretty. Just goes for a fourth throw for the edge guard opportunity. Cloud off stage without a limit. There That's we it. go. Safe and sound down tilt. Just stays on the stage. Doesn't give up too much stage control to go off there. Pound after him when he can just be be godlike on the ground. Yeah, I know. He was going for that down tilt a lot every time, and finally he actually lands it. And you notice that as soon as he does, that's just a dead cloud. Survival. You got the counter pick coming from Ralphie. See him surfing Twitter currently on his phone. Oh, no, he's picking his music. Never mind. My bad. My bad. He's got, he's got them earbuds in. What kind of music do you think Ralphie listens to? Uh, K pop, J pop, uh, I was about to say grunge, grunge, uh, Justin Bieber, uh, and uh, old school 90s punk. No, he wasn't born in the 90s. I wasn't born in the 80s, and sometimes I listen to 80s. Yeah, oh, that's fair. <laughs> oh, here we go. Town and City game two. Straight back to it. The run back yet again. All right, this time it's actually a much slower matchup, and Ralphie is kind of the one who's been making that happen. Not approaching the same way he was last time. Instead, trying to be patient, get limit. Don't force openings when he doesn't need to. Oh, he had the monkey flip read there. You see the air dodge coming. Now Dill's got having a heyday off of that grab. Wow, I, how did he not get hit by that? Shield, bro. Unfortunate. Put the down tilt. Oh, Catches him on that platform. Really bad. That's Spikes it. him. Gets that down air out of there. One stock away from taking home another Zeno for Dill. I mean, and let's not... So you could say, oh, it's just another Zeno for Dill. But the important thing is that if he wins this week and next week, he ties the kill stage for most Zeno's one. So if he doesn't win this week, that it's it's gone. That dream is gone. And that's like a pretty cool thing to have under your belt. Especially moving into Just catches him with the golf swing. Get some practice swings in there while he's at it. One stock apiece. Oh, he uses double jump there, so he had to burn limit. Okay, another grab, another backer. I'm liking the movement from Dill, the way that he sort of weaves back and forth on these platforms. And just paying attention, you notice he's like, like he's solely conditioning uh, Ralphie, paying attention to what his escape options are going down. There's, <gasps> oh, Ralphie died first. He went so deep to get that rocket barrel boost, but then just like too low. I respect the courage and I respect the decision. Just a little hair too well, slow. I mean, so technically could have gone for down air, but being in the blast zone, he probably wasn't sure of the timing. And if down air sent him above, yeah, he was dead. But cool. at that point, it's already a suicide move, just barely mistiming it. And that's going to be Dill winning another Xeno. Looking real strong. 